a way to mount something on top of there so I can have that up there. Yeah. <clears throat> Good evening to you rugby fans. Welcome to Aviva Stadium here in Houston, Texas. It is National Collegiate Rugby Championship weekend. This is the D1 National Championship where the Brown Bears will take on the Queens University Royals here at Aviva Stadium. I am John Broker joined by the contact coach, Craig Wilson. Craig, what an evening for rugby here in Houston. Oh, thanks for having me, John. Really excited to be here. This is the big dance, the big game. Brown versus Queens, two form teams coming into it. Uh, this is going to be a great battle. You see the teams coming out. Let's talk about the Brown Bears first and how they got here. The Brown Bears rode to Houston. They were 10-0 and on the regular season. Came through a good series of playoff games. First beating Wheeling and then taking on St. Bonaventure. 14-9, to they beat them there for Providence, Rhode Island. Been in the Final Four before. Great road to Houston for this Dave LaFlum, Coach Brown Bears team. Let's take a look at their semifinal. And it was a brilliant battle against St. Bonaventure. Really good team, and men like Ollie Corbett, number five, were absolutely influential, putting on a lot of pressure. And Brown are all about set-piece pressure and then kicking their goals, kicking territory when it's on. And you've got to keep an eye out for big players, as we just mentioned, Ollie Corbett there. Um, he's just going to turn the screw and really try and make this a very attritional game. And Raphael Lonsener kicking his goals. Some good young players, some good veterans on this team. Bonaventure, they really took away a lot of the strengths this Bonnie's team has to make it to Houston for this game. Wonderful work. And this is that Brown team in the huddle. Let's talk about some of the powerful men that make things happen on this team. We're going to key up two of them in particular. We're going to talk about Ali Corbett and Antonio Estevez. Estevez, a Portuguese under 20 player, very influential number eight. Multiple games scored more than four tries. Yeah, really key. This is the engine room, a powerful packs of Brown. You've got Antonio Estevez, who's devastating number eight, really powerful off the back of a ruck. Oli Corbett controls the scrum, controls the line outs, important players. Queens. Let's talk about the Queens University Royals now and their road to Houston, Craig. What a team they are as well. Queens Royals coached by Frank McKinney. Great season for the Queens University. The record is 8-2. and two. They came through the quarters of the AIC, the semis with Thomas Moore. And let's take a look at that game versus Thomas Moore, Craig. Yeah, it was an excellent battle for Queens, and they played their game plan to perfection. They're a team that likes quick rucks. They really try and get it under three seconds, and they've got some devastating backs, just like this try here from number 15, Roman Denevi. Brilliant try, but they really try and speed the game up. They try and move the ball. So it's going to be an interesting battle. You've got Brown, who are really going to try and squeeze the game, keep it tight, keep it attritional. On the other hand, you've got Queens, who really want to blow the game up. They want to be attacking holes and space. So keep an eye out for the ruck battle to see who gets the speed of ruck. All right, take a look at some of the players to watch on this Queens team. Talk about a couple of players here. Marshall Frank in the front row, we'll talk about him. Not often you highlight a reserve, but Prince Louis Bush, big in Frank McKinney's book to come off the bench, Greg. Yeah, so this is going to be an 80-minute game. So you've got to look in the last 40, 50, 60, you're going to see changes. And Prince Louis Bush is going to come on and add so much energy. And then you've got that big man, Marshall Frank, who's going to layer it on from the start to apply pressure to try and counter that. That brown scrum. 5'9", 275. Not a lot of men feel like we want to tackle him, but we're going to get underway. It's going to be referee Ian Seaton. For right to left on your screen is Queens University. Brown knocks on that first kickoff. That's Ali Corbett in the red scrum cap. They knock that one on. So Queens on the run. They want to get moving quick, as Coach McKinney said. We're here at the National Collegiate Rugby D1 Championship. Queens early touch of the ball here. Queens looking strong. Queens get outside the 22. Contesting the breakdown is Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. turned over. They're trying to slow him down, but away they get that. K. K moves it out wide. That's the big man. He's hard to bring down, as you would imagine. Underway here. Under a minute gone. It's been Queens ball. Queens looking very, very nifty at the moment. Fast start ball. It gets turned over, but referee Ian Seaton says illegally so. We're going to have our first penalty. It's going to be against Brown. Opportunity here for Queens. Where do you go? 
An absolutely dream start from Queens there from the kickoff. Uncharacteristic mistake there from Ollie Corbett, drop of the ball, and that allows Queens to get into their game plan. And as you can see, they were attacking both sides of the ruck. They came open and then went blind. They forced the penalty, and what a well, wonderful okay, start. And this line out is going to be really down. interesting. First of the game, it's a strength for Brown. Queens need to really Keep try and counteract down. it and launch their attack. And Thomas K is actually fly half. I called Hilton, Hilton Olivier. Day for a second there, my apologies. Coventry, England born. Thomas K, fly half of the ball, comes down to Olivier. Olivier moves it out. They put a big runner in there immediately. Trying to get some power going right from the get go. That's K. Pushes that ball around. Ball coming out here for Queens. Good defense there from Brown. Good patience outside their 22. Ball coming up through Olivier. Move it out wide, the runner running flat on the line is his offensive attack of the Queen's University Royals. It's fine, Queen's on. University, that one goes a little bit further back, gets into the hands of Tom Scott. Scott keeps his feet, the players on him. First two minutes, all Queen's, that one slips. Didn't go forward according to the referee. Players coming in for Brown, let's see if they can turn this one over. Have not, remains Queen's ball. Power run coming in the middle there. Martin Pierce, Athens, Tennessee, takes that one in. Again, moving the ball away. Olivier from Pretoria, South Africa, playing scrum half in Charlotte. Here come Queens. Ball was knocked on. So we have a knock on advantage against Brown. They pushed the Royals back almost to midfield. We're going to come back. Referee Ian Seaton will bring us for a scrum here just around midfield. Brown able to withstand that early onslaught. Absolutely excellent defense there from Brown. You'll notice that ruck decision making was really smart. When it was on to attack the ruck, they put numbers in. But when they didn't have an opportunity to steal the ball, they kept numbers out. That allowed them to have numbers on their feet, get double tackles, and that was just a real clinic early on in defensive strategy. So great start. Brilliant, but they did knock on, so therefore Queens are going to get the ball and they can launch their own attack from midfield. Crouch. Interesting battle, however. Coach McKinney said this is probably going to be the best scrum they faced all season. The scrum for Brown has been an absolute destructive Set. weapon for them. Interesting moment right here in the game as you see a big hit in from Queens, but there's that power coming from the Brown Bears. And they're going to get a scrum here off a knock on. That's a pressure the Brown wants there. You can see how pleased those players are right away. Yeah, that was a big, big moment there. First scrum of a game is always an opportunity to make a statement. Brown would want to be really bringing home how big and strong their pack is. And you can just see the Queens guys, just the front row, were completely lift up and dominated on their own ball. And that's a psychological blow to start. And now it gives Brown an opportunity to launch their own scrum attack. And let's see what they do with this. Now they've been able to use the scrum during the season to also draw penalties and move themselves downfield. So I think they'll want to follow Follow up that good defensive scrum with one of their own. Let's see what they can drive here. That front row of Gabriel Alhasso and Archer, but this one is going to go quick. Estevez, the Portuguese U20 player. Estevez makes a break right there. He's always ready to go. Want to see Julian School in Portugal. Ali Corbett takes that one in. Ball to his feet. They have to down on that one. We'll see what happens. Knock on. It's going to be another scrum here. Yeah, that's two uncharacteristic mistakes now from Ollie Corbett. He's a great player, so keep your eye on him. But obviously, Queens have done their homework. They're doubling up on him to get those turnovers, and that's exactly what they did there. And now it's all about just being secure at that ruck. And what I, at the scrum, and what I've noticed from Queens, they're really trying to get in an early drive because they want to withstand that initial brown pressure. So just keep an eye on it to see if they do it legally and they don't drive early. Certainly have done their homework. Referee Seaton gets this one down. Another big drive, but now a penalty against the players driving in the wrong direction in that front row. Already what a battle we're seeing in the scrum. Absolutely brilliant so far. That's three scrum in the first five minutes. One penalty either way and uh, unplayable. I tell you what, this is going to be a really tense battle if it keeps up this way. Just as we look here as they're driving in. Brown deemed to be wheeling so they're not driving straight a clear penalty for the referee big moment for queens ball coming in for queens line out goes well take that one forward Able to recycle quickly out waiting runners nice little offload attempt there comes back to brown but knocked on by brown so a knock on advantage here for the royals we'll see what they decide to do they're going to 
Kicked that one away, so advantage should be gained. Ball bounces back, has been doing a bit on this field. Got to be careful with that one as Rafael Lansenor has come on that, but dragged in a touch. Smart play here by the Royals, putting pressure on back there. Brown under bit of pressure outside their own 22, going to be a defensive on a line out. Yeah, I love that from Olivier, number nine for Queens. Great box kick, and it lands on the grass. And that's critical because a bouncing ball is brutal to deal with in rugby. And then a good chase, a kick is only as good as its chase. Brilliant play. Not wanting to get in the aerial battle. They go quick up front. Duke Queens called it a touch. It'll be a line out coming for Brown inside their own 22. I'll tell you what, this is intense already. Six <laughs> minutes in. This is high octane stuff. Exactly what you would want from the D1 final. Frank McKinney, we talked to this morning. Clearly, a lot of good analysis on the Brown team. Brown has a technical director in Eddie O'Sullivan who did a little work for them, taking a look at this Queens team. We see a battle of the analysts right now. This is fascinating. They really seem to have a, a bit of a cue on what the other team is going to do. Uh, you'll find that at this level. They know each opposition inside out. That's just to be expected. Corbett takes that one, and he winds up getting I'm taken down. The down pretty much there. Do have a chat? Surprise the referee isn't having a bit more of a chat. Yeah, he's having a bit of a rough go of it now, Oli Corbett. He's in the thick of action, and that looked a little bit unsteady. We all hope he's all right. He looked dangerous from a big man with his feet in the air. It's contact in the air when he's come down. He's flipped over onto his back. Okay, so we're talking back. Sounds fairly dangerous. We're going to go yellow card. Yes. Number six white. Yes. Thank you. Six. You heard it from the referees there. They're calling Kyle Van Niekirk. Kyle Van Niekirk from Pretoria, South Africa. At the high school. And get yellow carded for that dangerous play. Yeah, I think that's yeah. a right decision. You can see when the player was in the air, Oli Corbett was in the air. He just came through there, took his legs out in the air. Highly, highly dangerous. I don't think it was Six, intentional, but it is dangerous. Yellow card is the right call. Dyer is going to put this one downfield. Dyer playing at fullback. Dyer, the sophomore from Pentfield, California, with a Redwood High School. Find some good ground there. Also in the ROTC program at Brown. There's Dyer pushes it downfield there inside the 40 meter line with a good lineup to come. They also have a good driving ball, does Brown. I'm sure Queens, with their size and power, look to counteract that. Yeah, we've got a man in the bin now from the forwards, which uh, may influence what they do here. Do they go up in the air, compete? Do they stay down for the driving ball? We're about to find out. Also, inside center there, Massachusetts boy here comes that driving ball. Player looked to me as if they came in on the side there, but Brown eventually has to go to ground. That was Archer, the captain and beating heart of this team. Looks a bit like his front row partner sometimes. We'll have to work with that. There's Gaffa, Junior Gaffa, Samoan born player, played for Brown football as well as the rugby team. Played for rugby in high school as well. Good drive. Good way to keep the player out there. Smart defense from the Royals. But Dylan Lewis from Rye, New York, is going to be able to get a hold of that one. Looks like there's a flag. It looks like there's a bit of a flag here. I saw a bit of afters from, it looks like Zeller from Brown. Let's listen okay. in to see what's going to happen Push here. It. After the rough is over, 12 Brown, open hand, palm to the face of Queens. Was there any retaliation by Queens? No retaliation by Queens. Okay, so 12 Brown, yeah. open hand, palm to the face? Yes. Sounds like a yellow card to me. It is. Thank you. 12. William Zeller just 12. loses his cool. You can come with me. It's so open hand to the face, okay, no tolerance. I, was getting it off I don't so care, off you go. I'm just going to look at this back. You just see Zeller there, he's clearing out. The ball's gone. Let's see if there's a little bit of afters. Yeah, just a yeah. bit of a push. Just this needless, like maybe a bit of emotion is high here in the final. Yeah. Needless from Zeller, and it looks like both teams have now got a yellow card. So this is a very even Hand battle. Face. In a game like this, you just can't have players off the field for something as silly as that. Thanks, no, Matt. No, there are yellow it. cards that happen through aggressive penalties, but you need your best players in the field. And losing Zeller for 10 is difficult for this Brown Ready. Bears team. Ready. Yeah. Providence? Yeah, it's just it was just needless. Didn't need it. Right in front of VAR. Right call. And uh, he's going to have 10 minutes stay, to think stay, about stay. it. Marshall Frank, who you said, seven red the thrower position typically taken by a hooker, but Obstruction there. to move into the centers and come back for an offside against Cameron McAlpine, a first year player at Brown. Went to King's College Wimbledon. Lives in London and now playing in the Ocean State. He needs a hold. 
till the ball's off the top. Okay. Push ball's that one downfield. Be a yeah. line out here for Queens. Queens getting inside there. Two players off the field at the moment. 14 on 14. That'll come back in a little bit. There's just under 10 minutes played in this Division I championship match for National Collegiate Rugby. Lots of great rugby on play this weekend as that one goes over. Into the hands of Ali Corbett. Ali Corbett plays for the New England Free Jacks Academy. Good playing career in England before he came over to the States for college. Dan Archer, the passionate South African-born captain of this Brown team, took that one in, gets back to Lontendor. They launch one up in the air. They come back is Queens. Queens looks to put that one towards touch. It bounces back towards him. Really have to be careful of that in this game. Knock on into touch. Yeah, that's going to come. There's a knock on there into touch. We'll see what the referee calls. Yeah, that's two bounces now of the ball, which have uh, went nearly in Queen's favor. But it looks like he kicked it a little bit early there. The defense was quite far off, so he could have stolen a few more yards. But needless to say, Brown were alive to the action. They've got the line out, and they've got an opportunity. Oh, they've opted for the scrum. Maybe, and we haven't talked about it yet, it's very windy out there. So Brown have the wind to their backs. Queens are playing into the wind, which is a big factor in this game. Game, and it's probably why they chose the scrum over a line out and you've got to remember uh, Queens have got a man down as well. Maybe the reason that you know the ball if it's coming from the Queens end kick we've seen it earlier games today bounces tends to bounce back to take a head coach Daniel Laflamme. Jay Fluke rugby man emeritus somewhere in the vicinity Oliver Julian she said Eddie O'Sullivan works with the team a bit as well former U.S. and Irish national team coach here comes Gaffa the outside center junior Gaffa Puts that one through. Looking for a wide runner. Fine Estevez. Estevez is good at those wide channels. Finds his way to the try zone quite easily. Breakdown work from Queens. Trying to slow down this Brown Bears attack. And quickly they are, but they're going to get that one away. Dylan Lewis. Lewis gets it to Lonsonor. Lonsonor looking for the cross kick. It's a little high there. Ball bounces out of Corbett's hands. We're going to come back for a penalty, however. Corbett. So that just a bit ahead of him could be a different outcome right now. Yeah, that was a, that was a good battle in the air. Very well set, set play there with the crossfield kick. But testament to the Queen's defense. They've been really strong and they were brilliant in the semi-final last week against Thomas Moore. And it looks like they've brought that defensive form back into the game as we look back at this challenge in the air. There's three knock-ons now for Molly Corbett. Very uncharacteristic. But he's going to have a huge part to play in this game, particularly from this up-and-coming line-out. Dyer pushes that one downfield. Justin Dyer, environmental science and economics major. Great. Bay Area Sharks, San Francisco Gold Gate in high school. Very handy player. Don't move up, don't Representing move up. the Bears. Keen setting up the defense. Probably expecting a maul from the Bears. Bears go long. Ball comes down, wasn't contested. Wrap that one around to Corbett. Corbett sees it. Corbett offloads it. Advantage here for a penalty. Opportunity. Corbett took a good hit there. He's a little bit of a leg injury as Gaffa drives his way through. Gaffa makes some ground. Lewis coming back in the other direction. Lonsonur puts a quick one up. Big power coming in from one of the front rowers there for Brown. Lonsonur again. Steps, comes around. Lonsonur. He can certainly run. Born in Ion Provence, Van France. Played his high school rugby in Singapore. New advantage. New advantage. Another advantage against Queens. Player not rolling away quick enough. Dyer steps into the first receiver spot. Gets it back there to Dan Archer. Archer from St. John's College in South Africa. Lance Noor, ball in hand again. But referee Ian Seaton is going to whistle that up and just bring it back. Yeah, good intensity there from both teams. And it, Queens right now are just getting caught out at the ruck. So Brown yeah, are really dominating that ruck area, here. particularly when they so have it away, on attack. And that's just fourth and... Okay. Have a word with your boys. Can't have any more down here. Somebody's going to go off. Have a word. Hey, Queens, come in here, just give him a second. Yeah, you go off the point. It looks like as we listen into to the referee there, there was a team warning and a yellow card. And it's just all about trying to clear that ruck. Queens have been guilty of not getting away. And that gives Raphael Lancia number 10. He's, he's got a golden boot on him. I don't want to jinx him, but he's got a great kick. Kick, and this gives an opportunity to get points pretty early Just on in this first down. half. Just see the brown pressure. Lonsonur.
the sophomore. Okay, watch his back on, guys. Crowd quiets down here at Aviva Stadium. Good followings here from both of these schools. Grace Calhoun, athletic vice president from Brown in attendance. Spoke to the team yesterday. Lansenur slots that one. And it is good, according to assistant referees Matt Lake and Alex Hedquist. We mentioned our refereeing team, number four, Dave Haynes, a great Dave Haynes, number four referee. As first points on the board in 15 minutes it's taken, Craig. Yeah, it's, defenses have definitely been on top so far, but that is Brown's game plan to a T. It's penalties, kick it long, line out, scrum, force a penalty, get your points, and that's championship rugby right there. They've got a ball. They're ready to play again. Kick is going to come in here from Tom Scott. Tom Scott, the senior from England. New Hall School, Jumpsford. Ball bounces, hits the ground. We'll see who committed the knock on. The referee spots it there. We're going to have a scrum off of that. A little humid in Houston. A slippery ball there sometimes. Humid in Houston, that works. But now, <laughs> now Queens have got the scrum. It'll be interesting to see what they do, because that's, remember, they've got Van Niekerk, number six, in the bin, in the sin bin. So they're currently a man down, and you don't want to be a man down against this Brown scrum. So it'll be interesting to see if they add a bit of weight in there and what they do. Crouch. Hayden Johnson at number eight from Sydney, Australia. Went to Trinity Grammar School. We'll get this ball to speed. Actually, he's packed down to the side, so they have no number eight. Drive coming in from Brown. Brown trying to push this one back. Good job. Taken away there. Excellent by Olivier to get that ball away. Players looking to poach it. Another player over illegally there, and that was pretty unnecessary. Estevez. Ball down. Estevez, an all-action player. Okay. A bit surprised that uh, there's no little... Oh, we're going to bring both captains in for a discussion. So out of our it's going now. to be Thomas K. Is that out of our system now? Sounds okay. fine. Have a word with your boys. No more of that, okay? Once the boys is blown, we're going to walk away and go to our sides. Have a word. Pardon? Hey, Dave, do you have time on the card? I think that could be a little more. Yeah, it's, you could just see there's a lot of afters when the whistle's going. We've already got Zella in the bin for Brown for it. That potentially could have been another one, but the referees decided just to calm it down, have a word with the Entry. captains. Let to, let's see if they can take control of the situation because we don't want to see yellow cards for that. Just about 16 minutes here, National Collegiate Rugby D1 champion. Chip here in the Space City, Houston, Texas. Tar Hill State in the Ocean State competing in the Lone Star State for this beautiful trophy. We continue to roll on with a penalty. Dyer hey, kicks it down. Be another I line out for this strong hurry up. brown hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. set of forwards. Up to the task has been Queens, of course. Coach McKinney, good homework here. Stopping the drives pretty quick. See where they go. They're going to go to Estevez, but it's going to go over the top. It's going to get knocked back. He says play on. It looks like a pivotal knock on there. So Brown's going to have to work their structure. They get it just by Archer. And there's McAlpine. McAlpine, one of the two first year flankers playing this team. Both played together in high school in London. Then ball comes around to Junior Gaffer. Junior Gaffer gets it. They move it out to the wing. Little chip coming through. Good work there. Coming onto it is Max O'Donoghue. O'Donoghue races down on the ball. It's in the tri zone. Out the back of the tri zone. Thank you. Good endeavor, but it's going to work uh, out Captain. for Queens in the end. Yeah. Queens are going to get the scrum back from their area. Yeah, Again, there's a little bit of afters off the ball there from number 14, Max O'Donoghue. Not really needed. But it was a kick through. That wind probably caught hold of it. It went dead, so it's going to come back for a scrum. And it's going to give Queens an opportunity to attack. Thanks, Matt. It looks like that ball went dead. But they we'll roll out of the back of the tri zone. Guys, so behind. I thought it would have come back to where it was, but it looks like it's going to be a 22. Yeah, interesting. But we play on. And we're going to go down pitch side to Tyler Deutsch joining us. Tyler, let's talk about what's happening down near you. 
Well, I'll tell you what, the temperatures have fallen, but the intensity Rock, no hands. has. Leave it. Brown has been noted to be a little bit chippy in earlier matches, and they're going to need to cool that out just a little bit if they hope to carry this into the second half and be successful. They're losing too many guys currently, and they're going to need to cool the Jets a little bit if they hope to stay in this game. Back to you guys in the booth. Ball, Ball comes up. Good little move there. Not exactly what they expected, but they're breaking away as Brown. Get the runner. It looks like the ball is going to go in, but the scrum half had to take it in, so they're going to have to sort this out. Monson Noor is going to come into play, but they're willing to move it. They get the ball out to a waiting forward pod there. The structure that runners across the field. Player in there from Queens, trying to slow that down. Referee making sure he's on sides. Back up is the scrum half, Dylan Lewis. Big hit coming in, double tackle on Ali Corbett. You're absolutely right, Greg. They have done their homework on this player, but they have other weapons around. So they're going to have a lot of work to do. Henry Gabriel, the freshman, another Portuguese age grade player. Tremendous, tremendous runner is he. Move out wide, they go, looking for it. There's the captain, Archer. Archer goes in. Stevez has to come in. Clean that one up. Lots of doors standing in the back, pointing out to the left. Just a little seesaw battle here. Let's see if they can break this one through. Excellent work. Leg, the defensive on. lineup, Queens. That ball just squirts out. It's into the hands. Looks like Gabriel. It's squirting around the ground. It squirts out eventually. Gabriel knocks that one on. Headed towards the try zone. Scrum with their five meter line for Queens. They're going to need this one to be secure. Yeah, they were starting to build a bit of momentum there, but it looks like they're yeah. going to get number six, Kyle Van Nika, for Queens back. As we just look back here, we've got big, strong runner, Henrique Gabriel. Potentially, oh, it looks like he wanted to play it because he felt he wasn't held. A slight knock on, so maybe he just needed a little bit of patience there. But ominous signs from Brown, and it's a difficult place to exit here for, for Queens. Absolutely, you have to win the scrum first against this challenging scrum for Brown, and then navigate those posts to find your runner. Expect to see now that they're back to full complement. The number eight come off the back and try to set this up. Set. Aiden Johnson would be the man, an Australian player on this team. Big push coming in, balls away, however. Queens on the run. Zeller back in as well. He makes that tackle. Penalty against Queens. Good pressure at that breakdown, forcing the penalty against the Royals. Another opportunity for Post if they want it. We'll see what they decide to do, and they've chosen the scrum. Yeah, they're probably going to choose scrum because they've got the pressure on, but maybe a little bit naivety there from Queens from that scrum with the wheel going in Brown's favor. They went towards the Brown side, and then we didn't... We didn't quite be able to clear that ball. Uh, and then fair play to the Brown team for getting over the ball, getting the turnover, excellent play. And this is a brilliant opportunity for them to try and put pressure on. Estevez, I think I've said it before, I've called a couple of games this year where Estevez number eight has scored more than four or five tries in the game. So if they get this ball going forward, expect to see him go. But there goes Ali Corbett. Referee Ian Seaton going to pull him back there. Corbett thought it was try time. Estevez. It looks like they're going to go for that scrum again from the penalty. Um, this is where Brown are at their most dangerous. So just trying to turn the screw now. Really keep it tight. Keep the attritional battle. They love the scrums. They love the line outs. And just keep an eye on here. They're probably going to try and milk the penalty if they've got that shunt on. So number eight is going to try and keep the ball at the back. And then when it's time to play, they'll move it. But expect them to keep this tight. Marshall Frank and Josh Schwartz. 5'9", 235, 5'9", 275, anchoring the scrum for Queens. Really trying to hold this one down, but here comes the drive from Brown. Will they splinter it? They're keeping it steady. They've got another advantage. Too many of these winds up in a yellow card. Estevez breaks off to the left. Estevez is at the line. He hasn't quite made it. Let's see what Brown can make out of this. Defense marshalling up here for the Royals. Royals just outside of their line. First drive doesn't make it. Sometimes this is the Sisyphusian task of pushing the rock up the hill. Too many times at it. We're going to come back for that penalty. Yeah, it's exactly what we thought would happen. Antonio Estevez, number eight for Brown, keeping the ball at the back of a scrum when he knows he's going forward. This is just applying absolute pressure to Queens. And I'm surprised the referee hasn't had a word with him to say, look, no more penalties. And we're going to put this pretty much on repeat. Brown are going to put the ball in. They're going to try and keep it in at number eight, Antonio Estevez's feet. And then let's just see what's going to happen here. Let's see if Queens can counteract it. Second row, Chester Stanion, Tertius Dietrichson, haven't Bind. talked about about the co-captain. 
Dietrichs, another South African team, Stanton from England, playing in Charlotte, the Mint City. One of its names. Over the first U.S. Mint, in case you need to know. Estevez headed towards the line. Another penalty. Is that going to be one too many? We're going to go penalty try. Automatic seven points. Brown puts out a statement. Absolutely. And it's how, it's what they've been doing all year. And it's what they would have been drawn up on the chalkboard this week. All about the scrums, the lineouts, and a big call as Marshall Frank looks like he's sent to the sin bin. So not only seven points, sin bin as well. This is becoming a tough day at the office for Queens. They need to wrestle this back quickly. Now this makes it a challenge because now you bring in a reserve who wasn't the starter into the front row and he's got to deal with it too. And you can see they have the ability to draw penalties and cards with that scrum. Yeah. They make it difficult. Really smart from Brown. They're just keeping that ball in. They have zero intention of moving that ball out because they know what the outcome is going to be. A penalty try and the yellow card. So exactly what Brown wants and as you say it's going to be difficult now for Queens because they're going to have to bring on their replacement um, who's coming in cold is coming into the cauldron right now uh, but look it's still early in the game still only a quarter gone and it's all about doing the next job really well for Queens and for Brown just getting that ball back and playing territory beautiful Aviva Stadium the setting for the National Collegiate Rugby Division One champion match 10-0 to Brown the Bears over Queens University of Charlotte Two great building programs here. Good structure coming. The referee there. Assistant referee has his arm out. There's a brown player down. And a bit of bother here. We'll see what the conversation is. He's taking him down, landed directly on his head. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. So it's very dangerous play, no mitigation, correct? No mitigation? No. Okay, so we're thinking red card. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Looks like a red card is coming to Queens. We'll see who's called out. All right, so what's going on is you've taken this player to ground. Uh, he's landed on his head very dangerously. No mitigation there. Okay, there's no other option but a red card. So what's, so he what's he your option for his head head. He's driving his leg. No, no, no. There's no mitigation. He's taking him by his neck, put him directly into the ground by his head. It's a very dangerous play. That's what it is. It was a thing, but I was like, why are you not going to apologize, man? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, please stop. So if we just look back on this play here, number eight, he's got him in a headlock, drives him to the floor. So that's number eight on number eight, and it results in a red card. It's a tough call, but safety does come first. That could have been ugly. Red card that might have a big factor in this game. It's a classic mistake. I was just going to say, now there's two forwards off the field right now. Brown is going to have... 10 minutes. Oh, there's about nine and a half minutes left of this yellow card. The player off the field for the remainder in Hayden Johnson. Going to make it difficult here for this Royals team. Unfortunately for Johnson, taking him down illegally. Yeah, that's it's a, it's a tough one, but you can't go around someone's neck and you've got to bring him to ground safely. And unfortunately there, that didn't happen. I don't think there was any malice in that. It was unfortunate. But it did happen, and Queens are going to have to pay the consequences, as you said. Now they've got Marshall Frank in the bin. It looks like we've got Hayden Johnson, who's going to be missing the rest of this game. And it looks like Brown now are just going to try and turn the screw. They won't change their game plan, but this aligns perfectly with what they're trying to do. They're just squeezing the pressure on the boa constrictor. Wrapping around, getting tighter and tighter. Taking weapons Back away from the team. Ali Corbett has to bottle that one, but it comes down to Al Hasso. Clean tackle. Two players up. Let's see what they can make of this. They're gonna, certainly going to run. The runners coming through. That's Estevez. Estevez. Down to Lewis. Finds Lonson Noor. Lonson Noor is going to go to the boot. Lonson Noor launches one just in the middle of the field by the 22. Well taken there by Roman Denevi. Denevi. Moves that ball forward. No, stay, stay. a junior from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Ball comes back. back in. Olivier comes back to K. A long ball launch. They keep it in field. It's that bounce back again. Have to be tricky about it. Here comes Lonsonur. Lonsonur can run. Lonsonur feeds it out. Gets it out there to O'Donohue. O'Donohue. Down. Here comes Lewis. Lewis gets it in the middle of the field. Up they are. They've got runners out wide if they can get it there. They're going to go for one more hit in the middle of the field. Big Dan Archer. Coming across the other way to Lonsonur. Lonsonur's got options. Lonsonur puts it to O'Donoghue, but it slips. And it 
it looks like it went in the touch there. It just didn't go from the Cameron McAlpine pass. Great effort there from Queens. We've got to remember they've got 13 players on the field right now. And also they played the first 10 minutes pretty much with a player down as well. So they haven't really had a full complement of players for this, this whole half so far. And their defense has been excellent as we look back at the replay, just how they're looking to go a bit more of a drift defense, a little bit more passive. And they forced a mistake from Brown. Ball coming in. It's Martin Pierce. Let's put this one in. Comes down cleanly for the Royals. Royals, a chance to attack here. Well tackled. Ball coming back. They want to play some position here while they get at least one player back on the field. Lansenor patrolling the backfield for the Bears. Steps inside. Takes a big hit for his troubles there. But we have an advantage. Another player laying a big hit. Possibly not wrapping there. We'll see if there's going to be another conversation. Brown players certainly making their feelings known to referee Seaton. Going to have to be careful there. Yeah, you've got number eight, Antonio Estevez. He's a very smart operator from Brown. You'll just take a look at Even though he's not the captain, he'll be having little words in the ear of a referee. He's very smart, very experienced. It'll be interesting to see how that develops. Nice kick downfield. It's a six-man set of forwards for Queens against a full complement here from Brown. You'd expect to see them go with that. Take a look at the shot on Lonsonur. Yeah, it looks like we're just going to look back on this there. His great feet from Lonsonur. Really, really good. He's good at kicking, but he's also very, very apt at running. And he's a key player for Brown, and he's got this team down in this area uh, where we're going to likely see them all. But Brown do have a few trick players at their sleeve, so let's see what they do. There's Zeller. Growing that hair up for a while. Massachusetts native, good family, covered a lot of Brown events. I'm lucky enough to do a bit of work up there. But we're going to get back to calling an even handed game here as the ball comes out to Corbett. Always available in that red scrum crap. Big hit on him. He'll be okay. Ball comes to Lonsendor. Referee spotted a knock on there. We're going to have a scrum for Queens. They are very pleased with themselves, but now have to scrum six on eight. Yeah, that was. A, looks like a yellow's coming back in. Yeah, that was important. That was a really big defensive set there. So Brown did come with a bit of a trick play. They moved the points of attack. And it'd be interesting to see what they do here because they have to bring a man on. But when we look back, look at this tackle on Ollie Corbett. It's low, it's strong, and he gets the turnover. And that's the energy buzzer you need for your team, particularly with the momentum shift in the game. And you can see he's back on his feet, he's clapping, he's getting a bit of energy. Brilliant play there. Now it's all about securing their scrum and trying to get out of here. That's Martin Pierce from Athens, Tennessee, exercise and sports science major. So a good shot of the scrum there. 16, Trevion Reed playing loose head. Has come in the game. Players not driving straight, so it's going to be a free kick to Queens. They're going to get away with that one. Yeah, be interesting to see what we do here. It looks like they're just going to clear their lines. Will they kick it out or will they make it contestable, keeping the ball in? Looks like they've opted to, to kick it out, but because it's a free kick, it does mean it is a brown ball. So maybe keeping it in there might have been a bit more desirable, but let's wait and see to see how this one pans out. Discussion among the Brown team. Queens queuing it up as so we get a look at Pierce Griffin, played for the El Copy Wanderers, a program founded by the great Gavin McLevy down in Florida. A number of Florida players on this Queens team. Like he's certainly growing and developing down there thanks to some good programs. Reserve and a missing uh, fullback actually for Brown, played for Key Biscayne. Big hits coming in for Queens right now. Zeller bobbles that one. Queens picks that up. It's a little lapse to get an advantage here. Zeller makes a tackle. It's just a scrum advantage. And this was a big, big play. If we get to see that one again, potentially there from Trevor and Reed. We'll look back on it. Who's come on? That was a massive hit on Dylan Lewis when we look back. So from the line out here, the ball goes to Dylan Lewis. He's standing still, and my word, that's a big, big hit. And then it's followed up with another big tackle here in the midfield. So that's now three tackles in a row. The Queen have got themselves back in the game, and that gives you life, it gives you energy, and they've weathered the initial storm pretty well here, Queens, and they're really digging themselves back into the game. A lot of character. Certainly have been. Set. Steady, steady. 
Ball down. Players trying to drive in. Brown, Queen trying to do anything they can to negate the power of this scrum right now. She said they brought in Trevian Reed. Trevian Reed, 19 year old, 6'1, 236 from Georgetown, South Carolina. Played for the Charlotte Tigers, USA All American as well. And he had got to bring on the field. Yeah, and he had a big, big impact last week. He came on a little bit later in the game against Thomas Moore in the semi final, a bit earlier than he probably imagined. But he's a big player, big impact. Here comes a drive from Brown, going backwards. Walk's going to not come out before that penalty comes on. Brown pleases with themselves yet again. Put it down. Yeah, big scrum, big scrum from Queen, uh, from Brown there to put Queens under pressure. Queens have got to make that scrum much like a seven scrum. The number nine, uh, where is he? He's got to be Hilton Olivier. He's got to be really testing the laws, putting it as far back to his number eight as quickly as possible. Else Brown are just going to get the shunt on and put pressure on all day. So we need it almost like a seven scrum, in and out. Dyer pushes one down inside the 40 meter line of this Charlotte team. The Royals down at 10 nil as we hit the 30 minute mark of this first half. In Aviva Stadium here in beautiful Space City, Houston, Texas. National Collegiate Rugby's Division I Championship. This shot of Lance Noor. Junior Gaffa stay, stay. having a conversation. Ball out. Well won. Taking it forward. Yes. Good footwork by the front rower to get through there. Dyer steps into the first receiver spot. That's going to punch some holes in here. A little offload. Ball to the ground. Well recycled. Lewis looking for a runner. A little bit of a mess in the structure right now. Going to want to get that one down. Ball taken down by one of the first year flankers, but slips forward. Going to be a scrum here for Queens. Brilliant defensive effort so far from Queens. Look how organized they are. They're getting off the line, so they've got really good line speed, and they're putting Brown under a lot of pressure. Let's not forget, Queens have 13 men on the field right now, and they also played early in the game a man down. So this is really tiring stuff. A huge character from the Queens men. They're really sticking it to Brown and wrestling the momentum back into their favor. A fight on your hand, as you would expect, with the national championship on line. A huge rugby championship with number four, Dave Haynes, NCR player. Big push coming in from Brown yet again. Where's the ball going to spill out? It's going to come back to Queens. A workout for him that time, but under a lot of pressure and having to build that back. Ball rolls across. Lance and Newer coming across. Misses that one. It winds up into the hands of one of the wingers out there for this Brown team. Able to recover. That's their own 22 right behind him. Working his way back is Dylan Lewis. Estevez moves that one forward. Puts it down and picks it up again. Referee Seaton says, that's fine. You can keep playing. Player's got a release from Queens. He's eventually taken out of there. Lewis finds Dyer. Dyer is going to launch that one downfield, trying to get it to the center of field. Ball played here. Good run coming from Queens. Ball taken away there, looked like by Brown, but knocked on in the action. So we're going to go back here for a scrum. Yeah, bring him on, bring him on. It was a good play by Brown. It was a good kick. And there's an old adage in rugby that a kick is only good as it's chase. Yeah. As Marshall Thank Frank you. comes back on it, it was a brilliant chase. And then you saw right. number 13, big junior gaffer, got over the ball and got the turnover. Unfortunately, there was a bit of a knock on from a, a Brown point of view, which leads to the scrum, but brilliant chase there from Brown. And we've also got to mention there's a heavy wind right now. Brown have the wind to their backs. Queens are fighting against the wind and also numbers down. So they're really, really putting in a, a real big effort here. Is it a 10 point win is going to be the question. Wind can it change a lot there. Ball for Queens, drive coming through, trying to dig it out of there. Ball not appearing, referee spots that one, has to award another penalty to Brown. Yeah, and I think, going to continue to add up. I think Queens are going to have to make a bit of a, a tactical change here. So they're, right now they're going without their number eight, and that's making it really difficult at the scrum because when the ball's coming back, 
there's no one there to pick it up. So maybe sacrifice a flanker, get him in the eight position. Yes, you're a bit more vulnerable uh, to the wheel, but at least you can get someone's hands down to pick it up quickly, because right now this is just not working for them. Let's talk about a little bit, you know, sort of that emotional toll that getting driven back like that is for the forwards. They got to play the rest of the game. This is just not all that they do. So how does it affect you around the rest of the field? Oh, it's pretty brutal. Uh, it's really tough when you're going backwards. And I'm very sure the front row and the tight five for Brown are going to be reminding them at every opportunity well. So, yeah, it's a tough one, but you've just got to block it, do your next job really well, and get yourself back into the game. Use it! Good drive coming from Brown, but players did not engage get some from okay, Queens. We're going to have a scrum. No, 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 came no, in. no, we're in. Okay. no, no, we're Going to be a scrum for Queens, 10 meters out from their own line. Tactically at the line out, it looks like Queens are opting not to compete. Referee deemed that as an accidental offside. And then we do have a scrum again. It would be interesting to see if they do put an eight in because they really need someone at the back of that scrum to be picking it up as quickly as possible from a Queen's point of view. And it looks like we might have done it if we just see a different camera angle. But that's going to, yeah, there he is. I think that's a very smart decision. Set. Ball in, now they don't have a flanker on the side. Drive comes in, trying to dig it out. Good work by Olivier. On their own line, they're going to have to try to run. Put a little pass in behind. Means no. Set piece is going to be tough for them. It's that fast, speedy game they've been trying to play. Have not been able to get unleashed so far, but definitely have the players to do it. And there comes one right there. Big run coming for Queens. Who can take down this big man? Can they get him? Tackle coming across. It takes two players. Lonsonur, one of the smallest guys in the field. There was a high tackle that came in there, partly because he was getting dragged down, the Queens player. But nonetheless, they're going to come back to that. Looks like we have another card. Oh, yeah. Off. High tackle, yeah. Quick one. I, I, I'm not sure I agree with that, but take a look at the run here. Yeah, let's look back at it. So an absolutely brilliant run there into the heart of fence. And yeah, a high tackle is around the neck. To be fair to a referee, he's been consistent. He wants the really safe game. Uh, yellow card deemed worthy. I just think there was a little mitigation there that, you know, Lonsonor was making the tackle, so the player was going to ground when the second tackle came in. So yeah. he wasn't aiming for the head. No, I don't think he was aiming for it, but it doesn't, it's just, I think he's been really safe. Um, and he's been consistent, to be fair. It's a fair but play to Queens. Ball to Brown, nonetheless, good work by Queens to draw that penalty. Ball goes back. Corbett goes over, steals that one. Gets it to Estevez. Estevez fights for the first tackle. Inside the 22. Inside the whole time. Got a couple of kickers in either direction. They're going to go to Lonsonur. Lonsonur is going to launch this one. Just keeps it in field. Again, they're without one player. I think they're without Dyer for the next few minutes. Player not keeping his feet. Here comes Queens trying to make it happen. Queens puts a little chip through. Are they going to get a hold of this? Lonsonur makes a last gasp tackle. Comes back. Scrum half on scrum half, but knock on comes in. It's going to be a scrum for the Queens Royals on the five meter line of the Brown Bears. Yeah, I'm enjoying this from Queens right now. Regardless of the circumstances of the men in the bin and the red card, they are sticking to their DNA. They want to play fast. And remember, this all came from a break deep, deep, deep in their own try line. And they've managed to get themselves up into this position. And you've got number nine there, Hilton Olivier, how he's just tap and go. And then a nice little chip kick through to create that momentum to keep it and to force a knock on. Really great play by Queens. They're really sticking to their DNA. The coaches are going to be proud of that. Yeah. Max O'Donoghue, who was yellow carded for Brown. Players just taking out some water there yeah. yep, while they can. Get the temperature for these guys. Boys, we don't let them win. Let's go. Send the block, send the block. Yeah. One minute. One minute. Getting ready to scrum here. Ref says about a minute left. Two and a half on the game clock. Referee is the official timekeeper there. So we'll see that the referee team comes in with us. We'll see Olivier. Bind. Set. We have penalty coming here. They're going to go quick. Player was not 10. I, thought, I think he thought it was a short arm penalty. So 
We'll see here another player for Brown. Maybe headed to the bin. My oh my, there's a lot of yellow cars in this game. Um, so now, now Brown are down to 13 men. This is big, so we've got two minutes before half time, and then another eight after half time. So this is Queen's opportunity. Score here would be crucial as they tap and go. Big runners in every direction. They go off to that right hand side. Looking for a little run there is Olivier. Olivier. Ball slipped away. And then a scrum here to Brown. Just inside, it's going to be at their own five meter line. Able to get away with that one. But that is half time. It is 10 0 Brown University. And we're going to go down sideline with Tyler Deutsch. I'm here with Queens coach Frank McKinney. Frank, they came out swinging. They did. You swang oh, back. No. This has obviously been a physical game. That would be an understatement. What are you going to do? to keep the cool of your guys so that way they can still keep up the physicality without making mistakes? Yeah, so the first thing we, you're going to hear is say blue head. That means focus. That means bring it down, be calm. Second thing is we've got some subs that are coming in, so hopefully we'll be able to counteract our scrums. And third, we're going to speed it up. We're going to heat it up. We're going to go fast. We're going to quick tap, and we're going to look to attack, attack, attack. We've seen that you can be an offensive powerhouse, obviously leading up into this tournament. What are you going to tell your guys to do offensively to put some points on the board? Speed it up. Yeah, just like I said, speed it up. Keep your head, right? We're down. We're going to be down a man. They've got a couple yellows, so we're just going to speed it up and then see how things, see how the chips, see where the chips lay at the end of the game. Coach, I really appreciate you taking the yeah. time. We look forward to the second half. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Good luck. Back to you guys. Thank you, Tyler. We're going to step aside. Second half action of the National Collegiate Rugby Division I Championship coming up. Browns in the lead. Two men off the field. Let's see for how much longer. We'll be right back. And a good morning to you, rugby fans. Welcome to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. We have seven rugby action coming for you all day. Walk the spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Tonight may get a little crazy. You can meet me. Handles that one. Finally moving out. It looks like they are in the try zone again, extending their lead. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Since 1979, we've been searching for perfection. We've been thinking, sketching, and designing. We've been building, assembling, and strengthening. We've been cutting, shaping, and painting. We've created strength and beauty time and again. Our machines are made for one thing, the perfect hit. We are the crouch, we are the bind, we are the set, we are the squeeze, 
We are the hit. We are Rhino. Home of the scrum. In our game, we play with our hearts. We don't play with sticks, bats, or gloves. We don't wear shoulder pads or helmets. We keep playing when it hurts. And we leave everything on the field. What we wear must be built for our game. Welcome back to Aviva Stadium. I'm here with David Laflamme, head coach of Brown University. David, you guys obviously have a very distinct brand of rugby. Ten points in the first. You came out swinging. What are you going to do to keep this momentum? We're not really going to change much. We just need to tighten things up. You know, we got a little bit loose in that, the second half of that first half. So we need to keep things a little bit tighter. Really keep working them in the set piece, in the line out, things that we're really strong at, and look for opportunities. For us, it's just about patience, patience, patience. You've had an opportunity to see this program grow 25 years, I believe, with the 26, 26 years with the program. What keeps you coming back? Uh, just it's just a, been a tremendous experience. Like I can't thank the parents and and uh, administration and alumni and, and the kids, man. It's just it's really about all about the kids. I mean, it's a tough institution to get into, and it's amazing to see these guys being able to put this product out on the field. It's been a lot of fun. Well, we appreciate you taking the time. We look forward to the second half. Great, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Back to you guys. Keep, keep the gap. Thank you, Tyler, and we are here at the Division I National Collegiate Rugby Championship match, 10-0, Brown Bears lead. I am John Broker, joined by the contact coach, Craig Wilson, for this second half. Brown down to a well, one player right now, who is a red card on Queen, so they have to battle that one up. What are we looking at in the second half, Craig? Really fascinating battle right now. Brown are going to want to slow it down, turn the screw, set piece. Queens are all about speed. They want to play fast, as fast as possible. Brilliant encounter we've got going on here. Marshall Frank, the grad student from Hendersonville. And Carolina takes that one in, and they are playing fast. Looking to come to the left-hand side here. Trying to move that one away. Good defense from the Brown Bears. Little offload. Tackle was just a bit high there, so we have penalty advantage. But here come the big boys, I think. Coach McKinney had a word at halftime about trying to get some early points on the board, and that's what they want. They're looking at that try line. They've got the power. They've got the size. Here come the big fellas. Is he in? And he is. Referee awards a try. Five points to Queens. No short order in the second half. That's half. That was a great start from Queens. Absolutely brilliant. And you heard Coach Frank McKinney talk about he wants to play with speed, and that's exactly what they did. None of their rucks there were over two seconds. That speed, that kept Brown off their organization. And I tell you what, what a finish. You would love to see that one again. Come. And five. This would close. Eleven to points to three. Go, Lining up. A little bit of an angle here. Long kick into the evening. It's going to slide just in front. So we're 10-5. Five. five points in it. Minute and 40 into the second half. A lot of work to do here for both teams, but good statement start here from the Royals. Yeah, huge statement. It was all about speed. It was all about pressure, and they got the rewards out in the corner, and this has made this a really, really interesting game. We've got a brilliant 38 minutes coming up to round out this D1 final. National Division One championship on the line for these teams. High hanging in the air from Brown. Player pushed forward into it. Penalty against them for not releasing. Bit of a mistake there early on. Brown will want to slow this down, take the line out as they try to get all their players back on the field. 
close call. I suspect they, they may even take the points. Yeah, like with the points on offer, you've got to remember now that Brown are playing into the wind. So this is going to be a much longer kick than it looks. But that man, number 10, Rafael Lancia, he's got a big old boot on him. Uh, and this is just smart from Brown because even if they miss, it's going to be a dropout. They're going to get possession back. And that's exactly what they want to do. They want to take the sting out of this game and kill that Queen's momentum they've just earned. Thank Lots you. of Noor. Lots of points on the board. So far this season, the sophomore. Definitely within his range. Lots of Noor. Hangs that one up. And that is good. They're at 13. They answer right away. Do the Brown Bears. Queens had the first say. Brown had the second say. The second half. And that's how, that's how you answer adversity from a Brown point of view. So they just got put under pressure. They conceded a try from the resulting kickoff. Uh, restart. They get the ball back. They get the penalty. Kick the points. It's very smart rugby. Nice high kick up over the Brown team. Gets knocked back to Queens. Ends up in the hands of the Bears. Bears just inside their own half. Use it now. Lewis finds Henry Gabriel. Henry Gabriel, very active player, but has the ball ripped away this time. Here come the Royals. Royals, a big smashing run right there. Coming in to clean that one up. They've got some runners out if they can move the ball out wide. That big hit is going to change that. We're going to have a scrum advantage to the Brown Bears. We'll see what they decide to do with this. Lonsenor launches one downfield. They've gotten that advantage. Here comes Queens. Queens want to play this quick. They get it over to Pierce Griffin. Pierce Griffin winds up in a tackle. Brown players just going to let that one go. Little tip on pass there. Trying to draw on the defenders. Good work over the ball. Penalty, however, against Brown for not rolling away. We got him We can. Yeah, I know. Yeah, time's off. Time's off. After the play, the goal was kicking Ollie in the head yeah. and like throwing. Yeah. Hey, hey. So can you talk Every to the server about the guy who's me. hitting Ollie? Well, Dan, you have to, man. It's 12 as well, man. It's a short goal. Hey, give me one game. Referee just waiting for somebody to get attended to here. Brown mm -hmm. players discussing something they think they've seen. Yeah, there's a lot of talk off the ball now. You can see those rucks are really fiercely contested. Emotions are running high. You can see they're trying to talk to a referee, and the referee's going to have to try and just take all that emotion out, clear decision making, and only speak to the captains. But the discipline's going to be a really big part to play in this game because we've seen yellow cards and red cards. And then there was no so when we're just looking back, let's see what happened yeah, here. So there is a bit of a clear out. Stop, please. And then it looks like oh, there's a <laughs> kick to the head. Yeah, there. potentially, and then a little bit of a, a push afterwards. So it'll be interesting to see if a referee looks back. So let's look at the red scrum hat. Clears him out. Does he kick away? Uh, who knows what's going on there? But a bit of a push, and that's kind of Entry. been the story of the game. It's been a little bit aggressive after the ball. Queens does not need another red card. They've got one player off the field for the rest of the game. Nice. One minute. For a, a dangerous yeah. tackle. And that right there is not what we want. The referee just happened to be looking in a different direction. We don't have a television match official. And nope. this, the assistant referee didn't spot it either. So we're going to play on. Yep, play on. We get on with the game. But I think discipline might have a big part to play in where this final, how it's decided. Still players in the bin for Brown. Queens takes that one, decides to drive it forward. Brown trying to hold this up. It is a maul, so if it doesn't go to the ground, it will be Brown scrum, which is something I'm sure they would certainly prefer. Queens working their win there, trying to get that set. Ball's going to the ground, we're going to come up, and it will be a scrum to the bear. No. Good pressure work right there. Good way to keep my clock. Yeah, strong play from Brown there. They got underneath the ball. They held the tackler up in the air, and as soon as that referee calls Maul, I'll, I'll Brown players, if the ball does go down to the floor, do not have to release. They can just lie there. That's different to a ruck, and then they get the ball back from a scrum, and this is exactly what we wanted. This is Brown's game plan. 
Six minutes into the second half here of this Division I championship for National Collegiate Rugby. The stadium playing host this weekend. Tomorrow we're going to have the Cohen Cup, small college final, the D2 final as well. More rugby coming your way, playing host this weekend for this wonderful event. Queens players coming in. They were trying to get that edge, as you said, but running the risk of just uh, being a little early. Yeah, Queens are trying to win the race to the to when the front rows come together. You have to be really careful as the changes come on here from Queens. Prince Louis Bush coming on the field, as is Trevion Reed. We talk about Prince Louis Bush, he can make a big difference. Yeah, these are two big time players for Queens. Big energy buzzers you got. Um, just energy is coming off the bench. That man has put in a really good shift, but it's going to be a nice, nice big battle now with fresh bodies. Scrabble coming here for the team, Brown. This is what Coach McKinney said. They're going to try in the second half to bring some people in to attack this, and they do right away. Here comes Brown off of that, uh, Queens off of that loose scrum. Nice little ball in there, tackle comes in. Falls alive, but squirts out. Olivier moves it out. Relay runners out wide. Can they keep a hold of it? Queens on the move. Get the ball up into the hands of Jason Curry. Olivier moves it wide again to Kay. They move it out back. Defense coming in and around. Ali Corbett puts in a big contact there. You see anything back here? Off the ball work there again. Prince Louis Bush gets his first hold of the ball. We're going to come back for the penalty. Referee seem to have put time off. There may be a bit of a discussion here. Yeah, there were some afters there. Again, second. the rux of this game is really starting to become affected by this off the ball stuff as we just listen into the referees. Hands, handbags. Two yellow cards we're going for. So blue 12, blue 12 brown 8. Brown. Yes. So it was blue 12 first, brown 8 second. Yes. So it's going to be a penalty against brown. Yes. Captains. You heard it there. We're going to have more players off the field. We playing sevens before uh, too eight. long. This discipline Twelve. really has to get sorted out by both teams. So 10 minutes in the bin. Looks like Estevez. Sure. Or Brown. No. Uh, penalty against them. Gentlemen, I've had absolutely enough of this, okay? Do you know how many cards we've had today? I lost. Because we're going to add two more. So you and you off. Uh, once the ball's left, so do we. Understood? I've, we've had this conversation yeah, in the first yeah, yeah. half. We're so having it again. Saying, it's not him. I don't care. Cool. Okay, you're going off. Have war with the team. Absolutely no more. You two, you guys first, and then you guys for retaliating, so it's going to be a penalty against Brown. Have a word. Off you go. Okay, thank you. The red scrum hat. It's him that's been giving me help. Okay, yeah, yeah, thank you. Off you go. You can stay on. My, my apologies. Wow. I don't want coaching any. staff, I don't know what's happened there. It's actually or Ali Corbett who is going to go off for 10 minutes. Yeah. I'm not sure I've seen as many yellow cards and yes. a red card so a in the game team. as I've seen here. Um, how many numbers have we got left I, on the I'm, field I'm here, Johnny? I'm trying to, oh, to so count here to see what we have. So, hey, I Dan, really am. Yeah, this is a interesting game. The players can roll on the field for both teams. We're dealing with them spending some time in the bin. And that just changes the dynamic of the whole thing. But now there's open space. There's room to run for the Queens team in particular. Absolutely, this does play into Queens' favor right now because as you said, there's more space on the field. So Queens have got 13 on the field. I think Brown are gonna have close to 13 on the field. We'll just double check that. But this this has become a really interesting right. battle and the referee is taking no nonsense. He's been very consistent with these yellow cards. Any slight infringement could be a sin bin and the, ref and the players have to start taking that into consideration. And it's a penalty against Brown, so the Queens are going to put the ball downfield. They're going to have the line out. One of their main line out operators in Corbett is off for 10 minutes. Estevez also strong in the air. If they're going to try to defend this, but the ball comes in there from Marshall Frank. They're going to move quick. Turn around the corner they go. Tackle comes in. Ball out. Have to step back. Come out the other way to that man right there, Griffin. He steps around. It's a tackle outside. Just inside the 22, excuse me. Another onslaught of runners coming here. Sweet Bush. The penalty against player coming in for the side. Brown will be happy to slow this one down, I'm sure. Yes, they're going to take the sting out this game. It looks like a penalty there against Queens, maybe coming in from the side on attack. But remember, Brown are kicking into a pretty stiff wind here, so I'm not sure that ball's going to go particularly far. 
So they're going to have a line out to reset their play and just start chipping away at the clock. But interestingly, Queens do use substitutes to add energy. Brown don't often go deep into their bench. They've shown it all year. They tend to stick with number one to 18 or so. So this is going to be a really interesting battle as both teams start to use the substitutes. Brown working their way towards the line out. Defensively set up are the Royals. Look into the middle of the line out. They're going to go to Estevez. He is strong in the air as well. Ball goes out to Junior Gaffa. They're going to launch this one downfield. Do not find touch. Might have been wiser to try to slow it down a little bit. Little chip ahead. There's that space opening up. Ball in the hand of one of the Brown runners. Good work there. That looks like Gaffa. He's going to get to the 50 meter line. Lewis finds a runner. Coming back, they are. That's Dan Archer. Queens lining up. They get it to Dyer. He's going to launch one in the air. He's got a good boot. Find some green grass. Where's it going to bounce? It's going to bounce sort of all over the place here. Eventually, the tackle comes in from Zeller. Queens is going to launch this one back. Tom is going to be as Lansenur. Lansenur has some time. Lansenur. Pushes that one, doesn't find touch. Here comes Queens. Queens is going to get it to one of their big units. That's the man, Marshall Frank. Takes a big run, gets inside the zone, but penalty against. Good work defensively. And you can see how excited the captain is right there, turning that one over. That was a big play there from Dan Archer. Absolutely solid over that ball. Marshall Frank, he bumped off the first player, but he then he found a bit of a... If we look back on this, he got an initial bump on, but that's fine. And then that's just watch Dan Archer. Look how he's got a wide base. He targets the ball. He stays strong. He survives the clear out. And that's a really big moment. Big play there from Dan Archer. As we hit the 50 minute mark, 30 minutes to go in this Division One championship. Cards have been the story of the game so far. Plays teams playing shorthanded at times. Brown playing to their strengths. Queens, when they able to get free, you can see that speed they can play with, and they're dangerous. Just need a little bit of room. Put it down, put it down, put it down. Going to slow that one down. And a penalty against Brown. Not sure what that one was for, but they're going to go wide quickly, our Queens. Tackle comes in out of the 40-meter line. Another penalty against Brown. Going quick again. Look at their inside center there. That's Tom Scott. Olivier gets it to one of the big fellas. Ball back that time, just a little bit loose, pouncing defense. Ball's taken down eventually by Dietrichson, the number five, but penalty against him there. Bit of trouble. Ball to Brown. Once again, it looks like it's that man, Dan Archer. Brilliant jackal technique. And we look back on here, look how he's got a really wide base. He targets the ball. He's not moved, and that's just two massive plays from the captain, Dan Archer. And it'd be interesting to see what the decision is here into the win. But it looks like Rafael Lancia is going to go for the kick to try and extend the lead by an extra three points. Big moment there. Smart player to see Oliver Julian. One of the coaching staff at Brown with Dave LaFlamme. We didn't mention a couple more guys in Ryan Grant and Declan Boland. There's I Coach LaFlamme. Just had 26 years at Brown. That's quite the stat. Building a great program continually at the Ivy League School in Providence. Queens, a little bit of a younger rugby program as compared to Brown, but Frank McKinney there from the start, founding coach. And you can see what he's built, brought his team right to the D1 National Championships. Yes, yeah, six years ago, there wasn't even a program. Lonson Noor, is he going to find that one? He is not, so it's going to stay at 13, eight points in it. They touch it down, so it'll be a 22 drop for them. Waiting for some players to come back on the field. Referee Seaton. Little step, balls outside the 50 meter line. Gaffa has it, Gaffa's gonna move it across. Estevez is gonna get a hold of it. Big Dan Archer's gonna lose that one forward. Queens immediately gonna try to return it. 
There is a knockdown advantage. Julian's going to move that one. No advantage. We're going back here for the scrum. Yes. We're back for the scrum. Two queens. Now we, Frank McKinney, the coach, talked about bringing in some players to try to take advantage of some tired you know. scrummaging you know. players on Brown. Let's see how effective it is. Absolutely. So he brought Prince Louis Bush. Probably any other program in the country, that guy would be starting. But he's coming off the bench to add in massive value. And you've also got Trevion Reed. The big big player who added value into that last scrum for queens and they'll be looking to do exactly the same now because if they're going to launch a comeback it does start with set piece back line getting set there set. big scrum coming drive coming but penalty against brown players driving see. in and off referee right on top of that He's been strict on that all day, so Brilliant. even though Brown have probably had the ascendancy the whole game, he's making sure they have to do it legally. They have to yeah, drive thanks. straight, and that dime they deem not to, and they get marched back for it. Line is the line of touch. Perfect. Some of the Brown players there, Joe Alhasso. Queens, Frank to put this one in, ball pops over the top, into the hands of the Bears. We're gonna come back, the referee spots it. It's a free kick to Queens. Closing the gap there, so can't close the gap at the line out. Gives Queens a chance to attack. Be very careful about Junior Gappa ripping the shirt off a Queens player. Queens, Olivier gets it to Prince Louis Bush. Coming back in the other direction, get the ball to Chester Stanion. Seen a ton of Stanion so far in this game. Just about three quarters away through, ball ripped away by Estevez. He gets that ball down to the ground they go. That's Brent Geis. Lewis. Moves the ball out to Gabriel. Queens player down in a bit of a spot of bother there from that shot. Lonson Noor is going to step back in. He's a little bit isolated there. Going to have to get some players in. The referee spots that. It's going to be a penalty here for Queens. Big battle at the breakdown at the moment, Craig. Yeah, really huge battle at the breakdown. That was a wonderful turnover there. It looked like it was number 13. Van Ruyen, really strong technique as we look at an injured player here. But let's celebrate the turnover there from Queens. It was a brilliant bit of technique so first of all okay. it's got Raphael Lancia sometimes when you make a bit of a line break you get disconnected from your support and then really good technique I love how he had a wide base targeted the ball was on his feet the whole time easy decision for a referee might have been better to get the hard running Zeller that ball but it's gonna be a penalty against him as you see Corbett still in the sin bin Having a, coach, having a chat with <laughs> Coach Laflamme there. It'd be interesting to hear what they're saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to give you some good stuff. The player is still down here for Queens. Couldn't get a number on them. As you look at their coaching, some of their coaching staff over there, Frank McKinney, joined by Tyree Reed. Somebody says he trusts implicitly with everything for the team, as well as Charles Bradbury. Doyle Hedgepath plays in MLR. And Barry Tidd rounding out coaching staff at Queens. Yeah, it's a fantastic program. We were talking to Coach Frank McKinney okay. earlier today, and Queens, they were not around six years ago. So what an acceleration to the, the top end, the sharp end of D1 rugby. So really great credit to everything what's going on there. Scratch us up. Thanks. See, Estevez came over and talked to the Queens player, made sure he's okay after the contact. You good? Curry. About a minute. It was J.C. Curry, sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina, played for the Clayton Copperheads, as well as USA Rugby South U23. So the penalty against Brown gets a line out here at four Queens, just outside of their 22. 
was a long time left in this game, 20 minutes. With all the action, what's been going on, it feels like this game has been going on for much longer. 20 minutes still to go, some big moments to come. Frank puts in a long one. Taken down by Queens. No infractions there from Brown this time, but they're getting their maul going across the 22. Brown's going to have to close this down. Here come Queens. They've got some of the big boys out there rolling forward. Ball eventually comes to ground, but there's a penalty advantage. Taken down by the Bears. Back for another penalty. We will see what they decide to do. They looking to go quick was Trevion Reed. But players slowed him down there. Trevion Reed from Georgetown, South Carolina. Like the Charlotte Tigers as they push that one down. They get another line out deep in the brown end. Still down eight points. Yeah, this is really smart from Queens because remember, Brown have got Ollie Corbett, their big line out man, currently in the sin bin. So this is the opportunity now to take advantage of it. And you saw that there with that maul. And it'd be interesting to see if they try it one more time. But Brown have definitely at a disadvantage right now. Ball off the Prince Louis Bush. He's taken down off the line out. Well played. You see Corbett's back in there. Red scrum cap. Looking to go to one of the big boys. They're going to try to go wide. Stepping back in. Good work there from Thomas K, the captain. Coming back across. Here's Olivier. Gets to one of the big boys. Referee said that ball went back, so it's okay to play. Trying to poach it away are the Brown Bears. He's going to come clean. Going to get it to Prince Louis Bush. Prince Louis Bush is going to fight his way towards the line. Prince Louis Bush is near the line. See what happens here. Referee in the spot. That one is held up. It will be a goal line dropout. So critical. Coming for Brown. Good defense. But look at the strength of this. Pouring it on three quarters of the way in are the Queens Royals. Yeah, so Coach Frank McKinney, his, his replacements are adding value, which he knew they would. But I just want to highlight Brown there. So actually, if we cast our mind back to last week when the try saving tackle on the try line, and that was a big moment and they got under it and they did exactly the same there. They're really aware when they're on the try line to get under it, stop the player putting it down and that earns them the dropout. So some really good skills there from Brown to stop that potential try. Ron Sidnour. We good, Dave. His team in behind him, goal line dropout. Don't jump in. Ron Sidnour launches one downfield, wants to keep it in the field. Comes down into the hands of Griffin. Player rolling away there for Brown. It's going to come back to the Royals. The Royals move it out, putting some pressure on Prince Louis Bush. Second receive there, held up by a couple of Brown defenders. Louis Bush, very strong, so the ball's on the ground. Take it back, be a scrum here for Brown. Good work and tight, really smart. That boa constrictor we're talking about just getting in there and taking the game plan away from Brown, away from Queens at times. Absolutely, that's four or five times now that's happened in this game where Brown have tactically tried and Sir, succeeded to keep Tackler up in the air. Referee calls a maul. As soon as it goes down on the floor, it becomes unplayable. Brown on this occasion get the ball back. Came straight in, good, came good straight defense in, so far from Brown. And in, yeah, it's been more of what we call the dark art. So it's not the big tackles, it's not the big hits, it's the subtlety in what they're doing. Just getting their bodies under the ball when they were driving for that try, Queens were, and then there just to hold them up. So really good stuff and the tight stuff, as you mentioned there, Johnny. The, it, me, I, Coach McKinnon, we were talking yeah, earlier, we asked him, you know, what he thought about Brown. He said he watched them play St. Bonaventure last week. Really illegal, he said they yeah. took their game plan away from him. What guys? Brown is trying to do here and what Watch Queens off. is trying to avoid. You see when they can run and they get a little free and get a little wider. Queens a very explosive, dynamic team. A lot of fun to watch. I think very simply, Brown wants an arm wrestle. Queens do not want an arm wrestle. Find. Set. <laughs> In. Push coming on. Lots of pressure in there. Lewis loses hold of that one. Knocked on, so it's going to be a scrum to Queens. Is this going to be a difference maker as this game goes on? And this has been a, this has been big. And Coach Frank McKenney did say this. He he expected that Queens were going to struggle early on in the first half with scrummaging. But he was very excited about the second half. And he's getting his reward. These players who have come on particularly that man Trevion Reed and now you've got Marshall Frank back look at the power in that scrum it's not often you see the Brown going backwards forces the knock on gives them a chance to attack and they brought in Rowan Shaver the first year player 19 year old 
Balls out. Another player. Coach McKinney is pretty big on. Here comes Queens. Queens looking for the space. The space opens up. Tackle comes in eventually from Zeller. Zeller trying to drive over it. May have been a try saving tackle there. Thank you. Queens still on the move. Ball comes loose, but it's gone back. Referee says play. Back to Brown. Lewis puts the boot, doesn't get a ton of space on it. Well fielded in the backfield by Queens. And penalty against that pressure coming on there. Excellent work. I think it was on the fullback. And Denevi was well, a little trouble seeing some of the, the outline numbers there for yeah, me at this distance tough, sometimes. Tough to see the numbers, but great kick from Dylan Lewis, number nine from Brown. It was a contestable kick or close to contestable. It allowed yeah. the chaser to get the tackle in, and then that put Queens under pressure, and they entered the ruck from the wrong side, and that was enough to give Brown the penalty. And as you can see here, they're going to take every single minute they possibly can. Even if the scoreboard's not going down, they want to slow it down. So let's look at Dylan Lewis here. He puts a lot of height on the ball. Yeah, Number 10, Lancier. Great timing on the tackle. There's pressure on at the ruck. And then you can see from the Queens clear out. It wasn't through the gate. It was an easy call for a referee. And smart tactical Seven. rugby there from Brown. Big loss here for Brown as first-year player Henry Gabriel well vaunted player out of Portugal comes out. Will be replaced most likely by Omar El Jandari. Thank you. Entry. Dyer. Going right at his own 40. Always steady with the distance. Full team back on the field as we see the number seven Curry come off for Queens. He's had a phenomenal game, was recipient of that big hit. Hope both those young men are okay. Yeah, I think that's just a, a sign of this game. It has been an absolutely ferocious battle from both teams, deep, deep, deep in the season. This is gonna go all the way to the wire. A nice rest for both of these teams after this great game will be very good as the ball goes up to Corbett in the front. Driving Maul is on. They have brought in the Queens players. The referee hasn't said it stopped yet. They're still moving forward. Corbett a bit up in the air. Here comes the power from Brown. Queens trying to negate this one, getting some of their players in there. Got an advantage for the Brown Bears. See where they go with this one. Free play. Looking in the middle. They get it to Gaffa. Gaffa gets taken down by a shoelace in the middle of the field. Lewis gets a hold of it. The player looked like he was offside there to me, but Estevez gets it. Referee's going to play on. Already still under advantage. Knocks the Okapi Wanderer off the, the former Okapi Wanderer off the ball. Sub advantage if you want Across to they come to Corbett. Corbett puts an old tip pass. Still advantage out in front of the 22. No Players coming, coming over there for Queens. The Referee Seaton's going to hold this one up. Yeah, thank Just come you. back for the penalty on that side of the field. We'll see what these Brown Bears decide to do. It's a very interesting decision Six coming collapsing. up. It looks like there's going to be a little bit of a break in the players. Bodies are down absolutely everywhere. And that's testament to the effort these young men are putting in. It looks like there's cramp absolutely everywhere. But there's a big decision coming up as we listen into the referee. It was, it was a flanker. Five, thank you. Cramps. And it looks like it's going to be a brown penalty now, Johnny. Do they go for the scrum, the line out, or do they take the points? I see uh, Dyer with ball in hand. If he has ball in hand, typically it's going to go to the touch line. They're going to go for the line out here, five meters out. They can replicate that drive. Absolutely. That move we just saw just a few moments earlier, what led to this penalty was really important. And this is where Brown are just looking to turn the screw. This is their DNA right now, and it's Clock coming. Right. They've been doing it. Oh, they've been doing it for the last two years, but particularly Player this year. Piece. And then in playoff rugby, they have not panicked under pressure. Uh, they go to their set piece. They build Guys, pressure. It, and it looks like they're going to do that here. Referee Seaton telling Brown to figure out what they're going to do with this player. Yeah, the on the pitch, right? See some of Brown dignitaries down. Grace Calhoun, vice president of athletics, on hand today here at beautiful Aviva Stadium. Five collapsing. They're going to go for the corner through Dyer. 
that can secure this ball. You saw that line out drive could be a good moment here for Brown. Queen's going to need to really dig deep to drive this off, Craig. Yeah, I feel this is a very big moment in the game. If Queen's can stop this, that's a great play from them. If Brown get the drive on, it's going to be very dangerous. Let's find out. Held to Corbett, not contested. Players trying to pull it and have done successfully. We do have a penalty advantage. They can go for it again. Lawson Noor gets it to Zeller. Zeller taken down. Ball turned over. We're going to go back for the penalty. Off you go. And another card. Too many collapsing the mall in a row there for Queens. Now they're down to 13 again. Yeah, that was a very tight one. It looked like he brought it. He brought them all down, but it looked like it was instantly. So the sack could have been legal, but the referee deemed it wasn't. Now that's two in a row. And that's another yellow card, and this is very right, ominous. Right this Don't is troubling times Stay, now for together. Queens as we look right. back step at up, this replay here. We didn't get any as we actually bring it back to real back time. Live here, I'll have to put this one in. See if they go to the front to Corbett again. They do. You have to keep this one up. Wouldn't want to lose a third player. Good pressure coming in from Queens. Pushing him towards the sideline. You see Corbett in the air. Players come over. Referees on the spot. And Frog is awarded to Brown University. Five more points. And that's the skipper. Gets away with it. Dan Archer. Yeah, you just felt that was coming. They just turned, Brown just turned the pressure on for his last few minutes. And they've reverted exactly to type as we look back. They've got a well-functioned mall, well-organized. And out of the bottom of that, Captain Dan Archer comes up with the ball. It's not often you see your prop at the back of the line-out getting the try. I'm sure he wrestled that off someone, but that was a big captain's play. Huge moment in this match. One of just a few seniors on this Brown team. You know, we should mention Queen, but they're a young team as well. Both these teams, bright, bright future ahead of them as they continue to develop these new players. But Dan Archer, the senior captain. and captain, Gets the try there, well deserved for him. Yeah, he's a, just a big, big play. He was there in the big moments in the semi final. He's been there again today as we tune in to Rafael Loncia from a wide kick. Lots in the war. Good from the wide angles generally. Good to strike on that one. Comes across the face of the post, however. To some referees. Not going to award that as we are. Moving on here in the Division One Championship for National Collegiate Rugby. As we mentioned, join us tomorrow for the Cohen Cup Small College Finals in the D2. Games are going to be at 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock Eastern. Sorry, 2 o'clock and, uh, yeah, 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 and 3 Central. Ball comes down to Brown, out to a strong lead right now. Ball comes to Estevez. Estevez taken to the ground, a good tackle by Brown, or by Queens. Number 12, Tom Scott. Ball around there into the hands of McAlpine, Cameron McAlpine, first year player, but penalty against for players coming off their feet. Queens ball, we're about 10 minutes to go. They're down by 13 points. Move that one away, gonna need some points soon. Now Big tackle coming in, test resolve here okay, for the Bears. Queen trying to get on the run, ball slips forward. Going to back here, it looks like some more afters. We'll see what it has to be said here. The referee has said he is unafraid to bring out the card, so we will see what the decision is here. I'm sure we're gonna listen into the referees. Coming in extra. Yes. Do you have a number for the not back 10? 12. Um, yeah, no, not 12. Uh, 13. 14 and 12, or 14 and 13, excuse me. Please. You come here. 14, 13. You don't have to come in like that. Off you go. Stop. Actually, Donahue. Oh, we'll check. We'll check. And then 13. 13. Never back 10. Off you go. 12 then. Zeller coming off the field. No, Donahue coming off the field. What 10 minutes to go. 13, 13 points. 13. Whoever 13 is, off you go. Okay, off you go then. Two, two players, players off. Remember, there's a red card, so just one player up. You have two penalties. One in five meters, one in field for another. Yeah, this is... Uh, this is quite the... 
for goal five meters. This is really interesting. A lot of yellow cards. I'm just trying to figure out which numbers are going off here. But this is a big moment for Queens. I mean, they're only two scores away. They need to score soon, though. Particularly with two men in the bin, this is going to be yeah, so important. Card, so there's only one, one player up with a red card there. So there's two goal players in this big moment. But they put the ball down there. They have a line out deep in the Brown Bears' end. Opportunity here 10 minutes to go, as you said. Both those players off for the rest of the match. But Brown's going to have to deal with this. Come and in like that. A bit of luck in the beginning as a player steps in. So it's going to be a free kick late. here Back for 10. Brown. Going to play a lot more territory game at the moment. It's going to be their ball to do it. Straight out, straight out. It's their ball. Yeah, there's a lot of chat going on now. Emotions are running high. Both players have got to just take the referee and the perceived decisions out of the game. Just stick to doing the basics really well because there's a game to be won. There's a final to be won. Five. Championship on the line here, losing two players for the last 10 minutes. Pardon? Not a good start for that. It is a Queens throw in. We'll see if watch they try out, to contest out. here. 14. Change coming in for Queens. Roy and or Cunningham going off the field. Long ball taken off the back there. That is one of the runners. That's McAlpine, the seven. Always on the spot. First year player, making a lot of ground. London born. Estevez gets a hold of it. Estevez hands off one. They're at the 40 meter line of the Royals. Royal players come off that one. Zeller making a break. Good tackle by Prince Louis Bush. Still on the move here are the two player down Brown Bears. Lonsonor moves it wide. Well, bouncing around, just a little unclean. Thank you. Estevez. Once again, doing a lot of work here. Lonsonor. I want to think about some territory game, but they're going to move it wide. They get out to Corbett. Corbett back here for the pass comes just in behind them. Watch off. The referee, sharp whistle there. Wait and see what comes of this. What is it? Uh, knockdown. Lots of nowhere being intended to. Looks like there was a knockdown in the tackle there, which the referee has deemed as a penalty against Queens. So that's going to give Brown an opportunity to keep taking this clock down, just chipping away at those minutes. It'd be interesting to see if they go for the corner or go for goal. These are big, big moments. This is tense. This is very tense. Hurry up. Heart to my throat. No lot to do is call this game. Pretty exciting stuff here at Aviva Stadium. Players. It's accurate, yeah. You good? Ready to move here? Knockdown, intentional knockdown. That is Campbell O'Connor off the Queen's intentional knockdown. They're not going to go for the long shot at goal. They're going to go for the line out here. Not getting a ton of distance on that is O'Connor, Chicago native. I don't expect this ball to go too far out of where this line out starts. They're going to probably hit that man in red. Scrum hat, Ollie Corbett, keep it nice and tight. And try and milk the penalty because Queens are going to have to try and make something happen here. Uh, these, are, these are big, big moments. Uh, don't expect Brown are going to pass this ball too far away. Estevez. Estevez is going to tip that ball. It's going to wind up in Queens' hands. Not the result they would have wanted there. Might have wanted to keep that a little simpler as Queens. Looking for a pick and go off the back, but big hit comes in. Stay. Hughes! Queens outside their own 22. Pick and go game. We're at seven minutes on the game clock. Taken back in. Players going back in inside the 22. Looking to get it to the wing there. That looked like it went forward. Have a scrum here for Brown. And Brown has two backs off the field, so it won't affect the scrum for them too much. No, their scrum has been a real weapon. They've got the full complement of forwards in there. As we look at Coach the Flam, who's going to be very happy with his day's work, but it's not over yet. The scrum to come. Queens are going to throw absolutely everything at them. 
because uh, they know the time is ticking now. So watch the Queen's going to try and play, and Brown are just going to try and reduce this game to a slow, slow standstill. The Kinney tactics very good. It's been negating the scrum a little bit here. Both unstable. In the second half by bringing in those Set fresh legs. Both teams. Central Moral Jindari has come in for Henry Gabriel in the front row. Take away the space. Crouch. Bind. Take a look at some of the reserves there. Set. Join their day on the big stage here at Aviva Stadium, National Collegiate Rugby Championship. Referee is going to penalize. Beans, the result there for the Brown Bears. What they decide to do is we're just over five, five minutes on the game clock. On the five, on the five. Yes, it looks like they're going to take the kick to the corner. Again, it just takes a few more minutes, on the five. Uh, seconds off the clock. But they uh, turn into minutes, and this is just grinding the game down. Brown are just going to get that ball into the line out, secure it, and not play too much expansive rugby. But my word, it's effective rugby. It has been effective rugby, and down two players right now, down one player really with the red card. We still need to just you know, take the game in and burn off that clock. They're doing it very well as Brown at the moment. Yes, well, I've run out of fingers with the yellow cards here. <laughs> um. <laughs> we need a mathematician on staff to count how many people were on the field at certain times. Ball goes up this time to Corbett. Corbett brings it down. Queens cannot 20. take that one to ground. They're looking to get a little drive on here. Are the Brown Bears? Louis Bush has to come out and around. Referee Seaton watching it and making sure the players drive straight. Zeller, the inside center, joins the back of it. Another back joins it. They have pretty much everybody in there. They're right at the line. But eventually it comes down. They're going to have to work this one, but it went forward in there. So it's going to be a scrum of the five meter to Queens. Queens just hanging on here, Craig. Yeah, number nine, Dylan Lewis. The ball is playable. He could have got that ball out. I don't think Brown are going to be too disappointed. Obviously, they wanted more, but this just takes valuable seconds off the clock. Queens are deep in their own, deep, deep, deep in their own half. Uh, this is a tough place to attack from when you need two tries, converted tries to win. Bench there. Four minutes on the game clock. Plus referees time. National Collegiate Rugby D1 trophy on the line. Will it be a party in Charlotte or will they be celebrating on College Hill in Providence? Ball comes in, good drive coming in, but penalty against Brown. Again, driving in on an angle. They're going to go quick. They need two tries, but they have three and a half minutes. They can get their explosive runners out here in some of this open space. Down two players. Lansanur gets a hold of it. Lansanur, good work. He steps around. Needs a couple of friends to join the party to win that ball and finds it. Ball coming back out here. It has been so steady on the spot. Hands on the ground first. Penalty this time against. Queen's kickable position for Lantanur. Yeah, I suspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it looks like he's got a bit of cramp there. So not ideal for your kicker to have cramp. So that might inform the decision. It's going to be interesting to see what they do. They're a little further away from the post here, so they can go for the corner. Go for another line out. They've been steady. No, no, no. We got to take it right now. Points. We're going points. He's just going to have to target this. Referee Seaton says we need to play. We're going to go for a shot at post. We are going for a shot of post, and that's really interesting. I'm not sure Dan Archer knows his kickers lying down on the floor with cramp. Uh, no, so the one, time is off, ticking off, off. to get this kick made. Uh, water's been taken off by the referee. Um, so, yeah, Rafael Lontier is going to have to get up pretty quick and nudge this kick. Curious, it, it, it does, since the, here he is, or somebody's up and ready to uh, kick the ball. Looks like Dylan Lewis, number yeah, Dylan nine. Lewis Man of the moment. 60 to kick. Okay. So I wonder if Archer knew the rules really well, that if your kicker's on the ground, he gets extra yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. The player supposed to kick. Potentially, they are smart kids over there yeah. at Brown. Big kick here for Dylan Lewis. Played for the Pelham Rugby Club. Rapper Sanis. And New York All-Stars. Lewis, now at Brown University, taking his time here. Lewis steps up. Lewis. Slots that one, and this game may be out of reach with two minutes ago for the Blue Queen's four. University of Blue Charlotte four. Royals. That's a big moment for Blue Dylan four. Lewis. I tell you what, 
That was a big play from Dylan Lewis, the nine. He's been marshalling his team all day. He's been kicking well out of hand. He's been controlling the tempo of a play. And then when he's needed to step up and kick off, okay. the points, he absolutely does. Well done, that man. Two minutes on the game clock. Queens keeping this one short. And just needs to ride this one out. Two minutes to go. Use! Lewis back at it. Gets the ball out to a waiting forward there. See what Brown decides to do. Ball at the back. Use! Lewis going to go for the box kick. Now. Referee Seaton telling him to use it. And going to high into this Houston evening. Well taken by Queens. Queens on the attack. Ball out here. Again, ball comes Penalty out from Olivier. Prince Louis Bush, they move it around the back. They get it into those wide channels. Off they go. There's some space out here. Corbett on the run. They're chasing that man down. In Roman to Nevi, but taking it to touch he is. I think that's a sign of a championship team there in the last moment, racing down to make a cover tackle, defensive tackle. It was a hallmark of the semi-final. It's been big here in the final, and they were we, we big, big, big okay. moments. I think think Brown have just ground Queens into submission, and it looks like the D1 trophy is going to be heading towards Providence. Maybe head to College Hill in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, Watch is very pleased with the rest of the staff. Ball comes up to a step as he has to reach for it, but he gets it eventually. Not contested by Queen, so a little leeway given there by referee Seaton. Ball comes across. 20 seconds on the game clock. Could be some referee's time. Sure we'll cue that up as Tony Zhao lines up. He takes a big hit. Stockmeyer's the Queen's defense. Trevion Reed. Zeller. Senior on this team. It's rolled over several times there. We'll see who comes in for the ball. The players coming off their feet for Queens. And Brown is going to calm down and take this one. Diving over. And you can see bodies all over the floor. This has been a huge effort. We talk about Brown beating Queens into submission, but they've had to work for it. Queens, let's not forget, have had a red card. And they've had a man, well, many in the bin. So have Brown, but they've had a red card from about 20 minutes on the clock. So absolutely brutal on the, on the work rate there. Dyer back in the game with the red card. Puts this one out. Referee said there's 30 seconds to go. Brown, one last shot here, 21 to five. One try for Queens University. Would be a, a good part of the learning oh, yeah. process of a growing program like Queens. Frank McKinney, talk to him today, you can feel he's just gonna absorb this and his team's gonna get better from it. Ball up to Corbett, he has to tap that one back to Lewis. Lewis, it's full time. Throws a little dummy. We are at full time, according to the referee. Division one championship coming soon. Lots of Noor takes a late hit. That was just a silly, silly move there from Queens. But that should be the end of our game. Just not smart there from the Queens player. Unnecessarily. Let's hope this player is okay. And referee Seaton whistles us for full time. We have a Division I champion in Brown University. The Bears from Prop are taking this one away. Let the boys turn and celebrate here. Hope this player is okay. But what a performance throughout the season from the forwards to this Brown Bears team, Craig. Yeah, the Brown juggernaut took him all the way to the final. And then that was the game where the, <laughs> the forwards played. Uh, brilliant. Danny! Nice. National Collegiate yeah. Rugby on the field Ready. holding the trophy. Ready? Oh. 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 Ready.
taking over at Queen's University, the Royals, and if what to be called a hard fought game. That was a tough, tough one battle. Someone take the truck out of it. Where's Tony? Tyler Doy just stepping in. Tony, you are MVP. Yes, we wait for. Uh, and we're going to go down to Tyler Deutsch. We're going to go down to Tyler. Ladies and gentlemen, Brown University victorious over Queens. A defensive demolition derby. You guys came out firing on all cylinders from the start and never let up. Forced mistakes. How did you keep the momentum? It was, uh, we had a lot of preparation coming into this game, you know. Uh, all the boys were really hyped. It's a uh, history on the books of Brown Rugby, and we're really proud of what we did here today. We came in here with a full mentality to win this game, be dominant, and do what we know well. And we came out here, and we did it. And thank you to all the support that came out and everyone at home. Um, yeah, it really means a lot. Thank you. Ivy League champions two years in a row, now Division I national champions. What's next for Brown University? we got to keep going how we are and build upon this, you know. This is just a starting point. I think uh, Brown Rugby has a lot to deliver, and we've proven that, you know, we're a good team and that we deserve to be here. And in the future, we're going to keep on doing more and more and more. And that's all. Well, Tony, congratulations on a killer match, and congratulations to the Brown University rugby team for Division One national champions. Back to you guys up at the booth. Thank you, Tyler. You see the teams coming through and shaking some hands with the coaches. Tempers are going down a little bit. You see Lantanur out there. But what was the difference maker in that game? From line out and just the ability of Brown to grind out an arm wrestle. That's been the difference all year. And that is going to be it for us. National Collegiate Rugby Division I champions at Brown University. Remember, tomorrow we are going to have some big matchups starting at 1 o'clock Central, the small college final, the Cohen Cup. The D2 final at 3, that's 4 o'clock Eastern time. Great games coming your way tomorrow. We are going to leave beautiful Aviva Stadium for the moment with some highlights for every National Collegiate Rugby. Steve Cohen, Jeremy Tree, Steve Hyatt. Brad Dufek, Angela Smarto, and many, many more. Wade as well for our crew, our cameramen. For Baby Cakes, Nigel Hill. For Ryan Ginty, the man with the rugby plan. Mike Baker, Tyler Deutsch. For, for uh, Greg Wilson, the contact coach. I'm John Broker. We will see you tomorrow. Good morning to you rugby fans. Welcome to beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana. We have seven rugby action coming for you all day. Yeah. Blow up the spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Say a prayer.